This is five on your side at six. Focused on you. Just over two months after Missouri's Attorney General demanded Kim Gardner resign, the embattled St. Louis Circuit Attorney does just that. In a letter to the people, Gardner stated, quote, the most powerful weapon I have to fight back against these outsiders, stealing your voices and your rights, is to step back. Gardner's resignation is effective June 1st. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson, in for Ann Allred. And I'm Mike Bush. We have live team coverage of today's resignation. We have reaction from the politicians calling for her to step down, as well as from Kim Gardner's supporters. But let's begin with Christine Byers, who is live outside the circuit attorney's office. Christine. Mike, after days of speculation, months of public pressure, public pressure, Kim Gardner announced her decision to resign. She gathered her staff together for a meeting shortly before four o'clock today to tell them the news. Then she released a letter to the people explaining her decision. She left the courthouse at about five o'clock without speaking to reporters, but we are told she is expected to address the public sometime tomorrow. This all comes after Gardner faced a legal challenge to remove her from office. Missouri's Attorney General Andrew Bailey took Gardner to court claiming she was unable to fulfill her duties. Recently, several people resigned from her staff, leaving roughly 20 people in her office with a law license. There is a significant backlog of cases and multiple instances in recent weeks where prosecutors failed to show up for hearings and trials. Five on Your Side's legal analyst Scott Rosenblum says stepping down was the right decision. It's a good day for St. Louis. It's a good day for the criminal justice system. It's actually a good day for the accused. It's obviously a good day for any of the alleged victims. And it's a good day for the system. The system needs to work. The system needs to work for both sides. Now, while we didn't hear from Gardner herself, we did hear from Reddit Hudson, who says he heads up her diversion programs, and he says she was the victim here. She is the victim of racist attacks. We'll hear more from him coming up at 615. Mike and Kelly. Christine, thanks. Right now, reaction to Gardner's resignation from both local and state politicians is coming into the newsroom. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, joins us with who we've heard from so far, Mark. Kelly and Mike, a flood of reactions so far. We're going to focus on the reaction from the people closest to this issue. Governor Mike Parson, for, for example, he'll have the final say in appointing Kim Gardner's replacement. Weeks ago, when his attorney general uh, started the push to expel her from office, Parson told us that he would consult with local leaders like the mayor, perhaps local legislators, in making that appointment. He says this in a statement today, quote, we fully understand the gravity of this situation and approach our duty to appoint a replacement with the utmost seriousness. We will immediately start that replacement process. This comment from Mayor Tishara Jones said back in February, I said Circuit Attorney Gardner should take accountability for her office and do some soul searching to determine whether or not she wants to continue in her role. She has clearly taken that advice to heart by offering her resignation. The mayor also says, quote, we are hopeful that the governor will work with local leaders to appoint a successor who reflects the values of communities across St. Louis. So those two are playing nice, but note the difference in tone from the mayor and the governor to this from the attorney general, quote, there is absolutely no reason for the circuit attorney to remain in office until June 1st. We remain undeterred with our legal quest to forcibly remove her from office. Bailey says every day she remains puts the city of St. Louis in more danger. You can see there Bailey, who's campaigning in a Republican primary right now, remains on the offensive with his rhetoric, but it's not clear if he has any realistic legal options to actually, quote, forcibly remove her before June 1st. His push to expel her, though, did apply real pressure. When a Parson-appointed judge allowed that case to proceed to trial, it meant Kim Gardner would have to be deposed, maybe take a witness stand. We know she wanted to avoid that process in the past, that pressure may well have contributed to her decision to step aside. And we will continue to keep you updated on this developing story on air and online and at KSDK.com. We'll also have updates on the Five on Your Side app. A mother on a mission to end gun violence dies after being shot in a hotel parking garage. The search for her killer tonight. And we're tracking some showers, but not as many as we were expecting for your Friday and the weekend trending much warmer. Project 5 and Behavior Health Response are teaming up to provide mental health counseling 
Just call the number on your screen, 314-469-6644. A mental health professional will be available to talk with you now through 1030 tonight. This 5 Near Side newscast is brought to you by VIT. For high efficiency, high quality, and the best value in St. Louis, turn to the experts. VIT Heating and Cooling. Family is just very important. She's my sister, and we depend on each other a lot. She's the rock of the family. She's the person who holds everything together. It's a battle, you know, I'm gonna be there. Keytruda and chemotherapy men treated my cancer with two different types of medicine. In a clinical trial, Keytruda and chemotherapy was proven to help people live longer than chemotherapy alone. Keytruda is used to treat more patients with advanced lung cancer than any other immunotherapy. Keytruda may be used with certain chemotherapies as your first treatment. If you have advanced non-squamous, non-small cell lung cancer and you do not have an abnormal EGFR or ALK gene, Keytruda can cause your immune system to attack healthy parts of your body during or after treatment. This may be severe and lead to death. See your doctor right away if you have cough, shortness of breath, chest pain, diarrhea, severe stomach pain, severe nausea or vomiting, headache, light sensitivity, eye problems, irregular heartbeat, extreme tiredness, constipation, dizziness or fainting, changes in appetite, thirst or urine, confusion, memory problems, muscle pain or weakness, fever, rash, itching or flushing. There may be other side effects. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions, including immune system problems. If you've had or plan to have an organ or stem cell transplant, receive chest radiation, or have a nervous system problem. It feels good to be here for them. Living longer is possible. It's true. Keytruda from Merck. Ask your doctor about Keytruda. So you guys have had these windows for about nine months. You've lived through a couple seasons with them. You've lived through a winter with them. Talk to us a little bit about that and how's life been? Oh, it's awesome. No more drafts. Uh, the road noise has calmed down significantly. Yes, it feels much more cozy in our home now not to have cold air drafts coming in through the windows. And it's such a big change. The best part is for every two windows you buy, we'll give you two for free. Plus 36 months of interest-free financing. Call today and we'll also double your 2023 energy tax credit. Kim Gardner supporters have rallied and stood beside her for months. Five on your side, Robert Townsend continues our team coverage. He is live downtown with their reaction to the circuit attorney's decision to step down. What are they saying, Robert? Hey there, Kelly. Let me tell you immediately after we started here that Kim Gardner would resign today. I immediately jumped on the phone and started calling her supporters. Now, when that big announcement came down this afternoon, about two hours ago, several supporters of the embattled St. Louis Circuit Attorney told me it was a big surprise to them. The Reverend Charles Norris is the president of the St. Louis Clergy Coalition. Celestine Dotson is the president of the Mound City Bar Association. Both tell me they were not yes. expecting Kim Gardner to call it quits today. That's despite Attorney General Andrew Bailey's push to remove Gardner, her attorneys not showing up for felony court cases and dozens of relatives of crime victims criticizing Gardner and her office. I am disheartened um, because the, the rule of law uh, is the issue for me. The fact that um, the citizens voted her in and the citizens did not have an opportunity to say one way or the other with their vote. I guess she's tired, you know, and I guess my reaction is what she thinks is best for the city, I'm willing to accept. Now, I actually broke the news to Dotson and Norris. Dotson immediately uttered a big gasp for several minutes. She tells me that's because she and Gardner had lunch on Friday, and she had no idea this stunning news was coming down today. Live downtown, Robert Townsend, five on your side. Also tonight, we're following breaking news in Kirkwood, where a former Vianney school nurse has been arrested. Erin Forrestell is accused of having inappropriate contact with a student. She's charged with statutory sodomy and second degree and sexual contact with a student. Bond is set at $75,000 cash only. We now know the identity of the woman who was shot to death last night in the downtown St. Louis parking garage. Police have not identified a suspect, but sources tell Five in Your Side they believe the victim was targeted. Elise Schoenig joins us in studio to tell us what she learned today. 
Latasha Stewart was a mother and a wife turned gun violence activist. Now, Five on Your spot Side has spoke to her several times about the work she did to advocate for her own son's murder in East St. Louis. That was back in 2020, and that murder is still unsolved to this day. Wednesday night, Latasha also became victim of gun violence. Police say they found her body lying behind her car in the Marriott Hotel parking lot in downtown St. Louis. Now, last spring, Latasha talked with our Travis Cummings, making a plea for people to come forward to help solve her son's murder. We know there were several people out here. They know what happened to my son. Now again, police do not have a suspect in custody yet, which means whoever is responsible for this is currently on the loose. I did speak with some of her loved ones today who were too shaken to go on camera, but they say the pain right now is surreal.